We begin your four to five with some breaking news in South Carolina. Authorities say a missing six year old's body has been found. Faye Swetlick went missing on Monday while playing in her front yard after getting off of the school bus. Authorities say they also found a man dead in the same neighborhood. No details on who the man is or his connection to Faye's case. Authorities did not say how Faye was found. Details are still developing, so stay with WFMY News 2 on air and online for more information. And we want to say a big welcome to you on our 4 to 5. I'm Tahitia Moyes, joined by Eric Chilton and Maddie Gardner. Yeah, don't forget this is an interactive show, so you come to WFMY News 2's Facebook page or YouTube page. We'll be monitoring that. We'll be talking with you during the commercial breaks and on air as well. Absolutely. Use that hashtag 425 so you can really get connected with us and we can see what you're saying. All right, forecast wise, sick of the rain, are we? Oh, yes. goodness. <laughs> yes, that's a big thumbs down. Well, we're going to get windy and we're going to clear out. Let's go ahead and look at some of these numbers. Uh, th these are wind gusts, maximum gusts just today. Now, expect these numbers to go on the increase, I think, over the next day or so. 23 miles per hour in Greensboro, 25 in Asheboro. It doesn't sound all that bad, but when you get up into the mountains, you're approaching, say, 30, 35 mile per hour wind gusts for uh, a lot of those areas. So watch for that. Here's the forecast for tonight. You're going to see those overnight lows dropping to 34, a good bit cooler as we head into the next couple of days. The winds will shift out of the northwest and the clear skies and cool air coming in will only make it to 46 for tomorrow and it should be a little bit windy as well as we see this front moving by. Uh, so the planning forecast for tomorrow with that 34 degree morning low but sunshine all day. 44, we'll see that by midday with that high of 46 and as far as the rain is concerned it is exiting the building so to speak. Moving on to the east, the Montgomery County still seeing a couple of scattered showers along with Chatham County, Moore and Lee, but everybody else will see gradual clearing over the next three or four hours. More than 300,000 insulin pumps are now under a recall. The FDA says the Minimed 600 series pump delivers the incorrect amount of insulin. These pumps are typically used by patients with type 1 diabetes. The FDA says the pumps might have a missing retainer ring and that locks the insulin cartridge into place. If the cartridge is not properly locked into place, the pump could deliver the wrong dose. So if you've tried to go to the JCPenney at Four Seasons Town Center in Greensboro, you likely had some problems. The store has been closed for nearly a week because they say they have a power outage. It says it will stay closed until that power is fixed. We reached out to JCPenney. A spokesperson told us the store has no intention of closing permanently, but they couldn't tell us when the store would reopen. Other stores in Four Seasons Town Center do have power. Well, the U.S. Navy band is making a stop in Greensboro. Goodness, these guys are loud. Keep it up, folks. The concerts are family friendly, by the way. They're making a stop at the Greensboro Coliseum at 7 p.m. on March 17th. Today in 1943, the first women enlisted in the Marine Corps Women's Reserve at Camp Lejeune. The Marine Corps did not ease up on the training program for the women either. 3,000 women trained other places before the women's area was created at Camp Lejeune. That was in 1942. So Camp Lejeune was the primary source of women Marines in World War II. And get this, there were nearly 18,000 women serving in the Marine Corps by the end of the war. Early voting started today in North Carolina. It's for the 2020 primary election voting season. That begins today and goes until February 29th. Any registered North Carolina voter can vote in their county, but if you aren't registered just yet, it's not a problem. You can actually have a same day registration at any of the polling locations. Voters are able to choose candidates to appear on the ballot for November's general, uh, general election. That primary that's coming up is on March 3rd. Well, presidential candidate Mike Bloomberg, he held rallies today in both Greensboro and Winston-Salem to kick off early voting in North Carolina. You know, the crowds were so huge, not everybody could even fit inside the building. Yeah, but WFMY News 2's Brent Briscoe was there and he was inside to bring you all the highlights. A standing room only crowd came out this morning to find out what makes the former New York mayor different from another packed crowd. All those Democratic presidential candidates. So he won't blend in with the crowd. Mike Bloomberg's worked hard on landing key endorsements. Judge Judy is a fan. Don't know. She just called up one day and said, you're going to run for president and I'm going to announce it on my television program. And I said, but I haven't, haven't decided, I haven't thought about it. And she said, doesn't matter. This is what I'm going to say. Now you know. And in Winston-Salem, he announced former Governor Bev Perdue's support of him. 
Bev was a champion for education, an issue that I am passionate about too. Longtime mayor of Winston-Salem, Allen joins also through his support because... Mike knows how to energize voters as we've seen this morning. We had to move the location from uh, up on Polo Road to down here because of the huge turnout. Part of the reason is the billionaire has opened up eight offices across North Carolina with 124 staff members, giving him one of the biggest ground games of the election something he'll carry on for Democrats through November, even if he's not on the ballot by then. Mike is focused on mobilizing Democratic voters in critical swing states such as North Carolina. And he's made a commitment that he's going to keep the offices and programs going here in North Carolina no matter who the nomination is. But the big takeaway from the speech today was Michael Bloomberg's push that he can beat Donald Trump. We'll look at if that's true coming up at 5 o'clock. Another Democratic presidential candidate is coming to North Carolina tomorrow. Senator Bernie Sanders is campaigning in our state. The first stop is in Durham at 1130. Then he's expected to go to Charlotte for a rally. A rally will have a coverage both on air and online. So North Carolina, obviously a major spot for candidates to visit. It's a long way until November. We'll probably see a lot of them. But I wanted to know if candidates coming here to campaign changes the way you vote. So I ask you that on my Facebook page. Brian Bennett going through those comments now. Yep, absolutely. A majority of people are saying they're not moved at all. Uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, Jesse says, nope, average hardworking folks don't have time to attend a campaign, campaign speech or rally. And Jenna says, no, they don't come to smaller cities, so it still amounts to what you see on television. While Glenn says, not really, I've pretty much made up my mind. Seeing them in person isn't going to change things unless they're handing out 10 Benjamins. <laughs> well then. I don't know if that's ethical. <laughs> yeah. Someone commented on that post and said, uh, social media comments sway the way I vote for my <laughs> candidate. It was a tongue in cheek yes. comment there. But um, yeah, we'll see a lot of candidates. And actually at 4.30, we're going to talk to a political science expert about why North Carolina is such a big state for them to visit and what that means for us come November. We've been a battleground state for the last several years, it seems yeah. like every year. Yeah, so we'll dive deeper into that yep. coming up. All right, moving on now to the coronavirus because we are learning more about a quarantined cruise ship in Japan where a Winston-Salem woman is on board. More than 200 people are infected with the coronavirus on board that ship, the largest group of infections outside of China. Authorities in Japan say isolation is the best way to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, but others fear it can increase infection numbers. A pastor with United Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church told WFMY News 2, Candace Kulklisher works on the Princess Diamond as an entertainer. Well, listen to this. A San Diego lab thinks they discovered a coronavirus vaccine. The OVO researchers say they found a vaccine three hours after a genetic sequence of the virus was released. That was back in January. Now that vaccine is going through some clinical trials. They've already tested it on mice and guinea pigs and human patients are up next for that testing. Those trials could start by early summer. Keep chatting with us on our Facebook page and our YouTube stream. Use our hashtag four to five. We'll be right back.
know, the ACC tournament brings in nearly $25 million to the local economy every time it's held in Greensboro. People flock to what they call the granddaddy of them all to catch a glimpse of the excitement. But this year, your trip to the fun may take a little detour. I chatted with Zach Matheny from Downtown Greensboro Incorporated to get the scoop. So when you think about the ACC tournament, of course everybody wants to be at the Coliseum, but that's not the only place where something's happening in Greensboro when it comes to tournament town. You know, we did this about 15 years ago with Chris Daughtry, and we wanted to do it again, but do it better. And so what we're doing now is we're going to have on Thursday from 12 to 5, we really want to pull the employees out of the, the large buildings and have a watch party right here on Elm Street and Bellmead, right at the Tanger Performing Arts Center, really showcase and have fun. Like the old days when they wheeled the television into the In school. our classrooms, In I remember classroom. that, yeah. Well, we got it right here on Elm Street. I mean, look how, that's, that's a big area. So paint the picture for me, what will this look like then? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the game showcasing, we're gonna have free food, hot dogs, drinks, chips. We're gonna have a DJ hanging out with us. We're gonna have some interactive games and really just have fun from 12 to 5 on uh, Thursday. So really, this is like, it's a glorified, it's a giant watch party is it's what it is. Community watch party. And these streets blocked off, and you're not just doing it here. Now this is Thursday, right? The, Thursday from 12 to 5. And then what, Hamburger Square, what's going on there? Saturday, March 14th, we're gonna have the championship game is that night. And so we're gonna have, in conjunction with some St. Patrick's Day fun, we're gonna have a large stage at Elm Street. Wow. And we're gonna have live music. We've got a band scheduled. Uh, it'll be live music from 12 to 5, a beer garden, again, games and interactive, family friendly, and free. Free, because that's all I have to hear. Free. <laughs> So it's going to be fun because they're going to block off, in case you didn't catch this, they're going to block off that part of Elm Street mm -hmm. and the side streets as well. Big watch party putting seats and bleachers out there so you can watch it on that jumbotron. And that jumbotron wraps around to the front toward right. Elm Street. Two screens. Yeah. They're really embracing the return of Tourney Town, right? Yes. We didn't have the tournament for a few years. Now and, it's back. And, and now we you have won't. multiple places to watch it. And Hamburger Square, in case you're wondering, where is that? Some mm -hmm. people don't know where that is. It's near Natty Greens where that railroad track little comes brother, in. Little Brother. McGee. Right and, yep, Little Brother Brewer. Yeah. Exactly. Right there. Is this a free event? Totally free. That's live, awesome. live music, bands from like 12 to 5. It's going to be awesome. Very cool. Something else that's awesome, a local woman was on Ellen today. Did you catch that this morning? Lauren Hospital of Kernersville played Ellen's 62nd trivia game and she won $10,000. She's from Kernersville, like I said, went to East Forsyth High School and Elon Law School. Congratulations, Lauren. Yes, she, when, she, when she, won. she was dancing like this at the end. It was great. <laughs> I was watching it and I, someone had emailed us and said, my daughter's friend is on Ellen today. Check it out. So I was like, I bet this is her because they didn't say where she was from. Perfect. But she's from Kernersville. Yeah. Represent. I love seeing local people on Ellen because it's like, well, we're there too. We're right. There too. And they literally just handed her a, a stack of cash. At the end, <laughs> like here you go. Can you imagine shopping spree in LA. Yes, I can. Sounds like a <laughs> better not check a bag a on your Thursday, flight yeah, back. Right? That's it's what I'm saying. It's worth four local girls who are out there for a Galentine's Day trip. Yeah. By the don't, way, don't check that money in no, the bag. No, in the carry on. Just carry or put on. it in the ATM. I think it's Deposit safer that way. One, There's a bank in LA, isn't one there? Bill one bill at a time. <laughs> that would take forever. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>
welcome back to the four to five. Hey, Valentine's Day is tomorrow. Maybe your sweetie is going to get you some roses like these are beautiful, but how do you make them last longer, right? That is the age old question. You spend a lot of money on these things. Well, these florists have some tips for you. Let's go through them right now. First, you want to snip the ends of those flowers and use room temperature water. Also, use that flower food that comes with the bouquet. It actually does help. And another tip here, take off the leaves from the parts of the stems that go under the water. So do you ever dwell on how much time you spend regretting something in life? Well, Consumer Research Company says on average, we spend 110 hours regretting our decisions a year. Now, if you do the math, that's almost 8,000 hours in your lifetime, potentially. 79% of people surveyed say they should have taken more risks and 23% say they regret breaking up with someone. And I know as uh, Valentine's Day is tomorrow, that regret may be coming up on some people's minds. It's regret. true. Yeah. It makes you think about it. 23% of people? 23. That's almost a quarter. I mean, it you is. live and you learn, right? I, I don't know that I need to dwell on regretting something. But maybe it could have been the one that got away. So it's people thinking about that person. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's interesting. All right, we'll check in with Brian now, see what folks are saying about that, because that's, that number is kind of big to me, I thought. Yeah, a lot of people are chiming in on this one right here. Uh, Mike says, I regret making a Tinder account. Well, oh, oh, <laughs> well, it's okay, Mike. And speaking about the one that got away, she, uh, Michelle has two that got away. She says, uh, both my ex-husbands. Well, uh, she's laughing Yeah, about it's kind of it. crazy. Sharon says, most of my regrets are not spending more time with my kids, playing mm. with them, enjoying them. I had to work too much to make ends meet. I would tell parents to enjoy the little ones. They grow too fast. Let's see if we can get one more in. Helen says, I regret not joining the Air Force when I was 18 and had a chance. And Brittany says, I regret not going straight to college after high school. Hmm. And uh, let's keep it moving. Let's see if we can get through all of these. Uh, <laughs> Cherokee says, regret didn't save up when I was younger. Oh, yeah. That's Compound a interest. Yeah, no That's kidding. a huge yeah. one. Uh, Elizabeth says, I regret not finishing my career in the U.S. Army, even though I was in the Army Reserves and not finishing my bachelor's degree in health administration. Hmm. She said, uh, when Tahitia said compounded interest, it made me think I watched a documentary on Warren Buffett's life. He said, compounded interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Right. If only we could achieve that. No kidding. More people could. It's yeah. amazing. So I wrote on my Facebook page that I regretted uh, not staying in piano lessons. Once it started to right. get to the hands doing two different things mm -hmm. at two different times, I, could, I, just, I just quit. And my mom said, okay. I wish she had said, no, you're going to go. Whether you like it or not, I and you'll appreciate it later. That's the right. same regret for me, because right. I always thought yeah. playing the piano, I was like, eh, I'm not doing that, you know, and I, now I wish I had. Yeah, I can only play like Jingle Bells, and we wish you a Merry <laughs> Christmas. Clearly the Christmas song right. stuck with me there. Classics, though. So that's it, yeah. So There's I, that, what's that one that's do, 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 Oh, the do, do, Heart and Soul? Yeah, everyone knows called? that one. Yeah, you know that one. The, yeah. They did in big. And, and you know, everyone when, like plays a part on the piano. Dun, 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 Someone dun, plays the melody, the harmony. It's the one they did in big on the Anybody else? Okay. Bueller. All right. Bueller. Yeah. Now we, mu we must oh, take yeah. a break. We'll be right back. I need a break. <laughs>
Welcome back to the four to five. You know, every day we hear something else about e cigarette use. Now there's a new lawsuit that accuses Jewel of reaching out to kids by buying ad space on websites like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. So Massachusetts prosecutors reportedly discovered these ads with younger looking models In the lawsuit. They say Jewel is accused of adopting a campaign that targets a quote cool crowd. Jewel says they have not reviewed the complaint just yet. All right, an Arizona mom praising Target these days for an ad that she said made her son feel included. This is a great story. The billboard in the store shows a boy in a wheelchair. Demi Garza Pena says her two-year-old son, Ollie, stopped in his tracks when he saw the ad. Target launched a more inclusive ad for in 2017 for their clothing lines, and he loved it. Cute story. One of the best stories of the day. There's an image of him going around on social media now where he's just staring at the ad. He was just transfixed at it. So right. cute. there it is. It's right there. Really cute. Really just like, sweet. wow, I see myself for the first time yes, that's right. in a way that I haven't. Right. And it's just another example of why representation matters. Because this kid sees someone who looks just like him and is in a wheelchair and sees that that is okay and that is normal. And I think it's one thing, too, not only to see it, but to see it young so that mm -hmm. you don't feel Good like point. you grew up and you're 15, 16, and you haven't seen someone like yourself up represented in media so I love that he's getting to experience that at such a young age. I think you're absolutely right because as we get older and people mature then you understand a little bit better but when you're young you're so influential and it's nice to see that. Yeah. yeah. I love it. All right well the best part of the four to five is that we get to chat with you and see what you're saying on our live streams here so we want to check in now with our digital expert Brian Bennett to see what's going on on the stream today. <laughs> what's up BB? Uh, we're about? reading some more comments about the whole regret thing. I didn't get to get to the ones that were actually on the stream so I uh, uh, David said he regrets his ex-wife. Uh, Rick says no regrets here, while Joey says uh, too many regrets to count. But Eric, um, I hope you're not regretting those glasses. We really haven't had a chance to actually uh, talk we about haven't we, talked about, about these? Yeah, but What's Brenda going said on? it's the first time that I so I had glasses in, uh, when I was a sophomore in high school for just a short amount of time, but I really didn't need it. Okay, you know, it was, I just did it because I thought it was cool. But now, now I need it <laughs> because that's now what people do. Okay, I let's see. Yes. Yes. And like my it. dad, my dad was like, really, yeah. you're gonna make me spin that, and then you just <laughs> throw them away? Yeah, here it is. Okay. That's it, the new look. I like it. Man. It's Will not we all see the these time. every day? No? Uh, here and there, it just depends. It's all about seeing. I, I talk about this in my two cents today. So at oh. the end of the 4 into the 4:30, the whole hour right, rather. I'll watch that because there was some. I was a little nervous about it. It looks good. And yesterday when we were about to go on air, he looked at his iPad where we have our scripts. He said, "I can actually see that." I know. I said, "Look at all the words it's and amazing. things." <laughs> yeah. And good. Brenda like said, him. "You look uh, very classy." Oh, oh thank classy. you. There we, we need some class here on the four to five. Stay classy. <laughs> Stay classy. We'll be right back. All right. I want to tell you about a story that is coming up tonight at 11. So one in eight couples have trouble getting pregnant, but for one triad couple, it would be a near nearly impossible for them to get pregnant naturally. So the Cachettes turned to doctors for help. They knew they would need to do IVF in order to have a child, and they also wanted to do something extra to make sure that whatever child they had didn't have cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic lung disease. The odds were so stacked against us, and we just kept pushing and kept pushing. And keeping that end goal in mind really helped drive us. Take a look at this cute baby. The couple's baby, Ollie, is now almost one year old. Coming up tonight at 11, their story of hope on how they defied the odds, plus how technology ensured that their baby, Ollie, would never develop cystic fibrosis. Such a cutie there. All right, let's look at our radar and see what's happening with rain. Yeah, look at this, finally moving out. Doris in our live chat on WFMY News 2's Facebook page said that the sun was coming out where she is. So we'll see some breaks in the clouds. I think it'll take us a little bit longer to see for everybody to clear out, but maybe a few more hours. And by this uh, evening, we're in great shape, but it'll be colder tomorrow. 34 tomorrow morning, 46 the high. Sunshine Friday, Saturday, the coldest day. Saturday with a 23 degree morning low and daytime highs at 43. We're coming back. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. I have about like 30 
30 seconds to a minute gotcha. to uh, move the aim, get your chair in, and you guys will chat a little bit. Okay. Oh, I get to sit this time. I'm sitting back. Yes. <laughs> you ready for a uh, mic check this out? You want to count to 10 for us? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That sound good? Welcome back to your 4 to 5. I'm Eric Chilton here with Tasha Moyes and Maddie Gardner. Yes, thank you for watching us this Thursday afternoon. We're here to inform you, really make you feel connected, and let you in on our world. And a big part of how we do that is we talk with you throughout the show, not only on air, but we are streaming live on the WFMY News us. 2 Facebook page and also live on the WFMY News 2 YouTube page. So log on and join the conversation. All right, in the meantime, let's get you all caught up to speed on some headlines of the day with your four to five roundup. We are beginning in South Carolina where we have learned that authorities say that the search for a missing six year old is now over and it's a homicide. Faye Swetlick went missing Monday while playing in her front yard after getting off of the school bus. Authorities say a man was also found dead in the same neighborhood. No word if his death is connected to Faye's case just yet. Authorities did not explain what led them to her body. The Australian wildfires have finally been contained. That's according to the fire service down there. At least 33 people and more than a billion animals died in those wildfires. Australia is now seeing the heaviest downpour in that area in 30 years. Flash flooding is now a concern. Authorities say they expect all the fires to be out by this weekend after the rainfall. And the winners of the Triad Has Talent competition has been announced. Martha Bowers of High Point won the $500 first prize. Katie Smith of Kernersville came in second and won the People's Choice Award. And Tara Flurry from Winston-Salem placed third. They all sang, so big congratulations to them. And the Greensboro Urban Ministry wants your help painting a mural. The ministry is brightening up the walls of their building, so two winners will be chosen. The entry dates are from April 1st through August 26th, and if you're interested, you'll actually have to mail in your design to the ministry. You can find that information on the ministry's website. All right, let's talk about a forecast that shows some rain, but the good news is it's moving in the right direction. As a matter of fact, let's look at our camera real quick here, our weather camera downtown Greensboro. You can see it bouncing around a little bit. The winds are starting to pick up, but look, breaks in the clouds. We love that. So this rain heading down to the south and to the east, it'll take it a little while before it all clears out and we end up with a better situation, but we'll go out to a wider shot here so you can see what's going on. Yeah, the heavier rain is now isolated to the east, although we could see some of that in Montgomery County and then again in Chatham, more in Lee counties. 
I think seeing a little bit more of that rain for a while before it all clears out. Winds will start to pick up and we'll see that happen as we head into the overnight and into tomorrow for sure. Here's your seven day forecast with 46 degrees tomorrow. By the way, the morning low at 34. It'll be chilly and need the heavy coat. 46 the high uh, sunshine for Friday, Saturday and most of the day Sunday, Saturday, the coldest day morning temperatures at 23, a high of 43. We're in the low 50s for Sunday and then warming back to the low 60s with a little rain by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. North Carolina is a key state in the 2020 election, and that is clear from how many candidates have or will visit our state before this election in November. Today, Michael Bloomberg was in town. Tomorrow, Senator Bernie Sanders will visit. Former Vice President Biden has also made a stop in North Carolina. Yeah, and four years ago, our state was a hot spot for candidates. If you remember, Donald Trump visited 23 times, and Hillary Clinton made 16 stops. So Dr. Hunter Bacot, a political science professor from UNCG, is here to talk more about this. Uh, Dr. Bacot, why do candidates make our state a priority? Because now it's a main state in the process, particularly in November. But for now, for the primaries, democratically, on Super Tuesday, about 65% about of the delegates going to be decided. So that's a big number going to 2100, about 2000. Do you think, this, is this going to be the trend, though, in the future? It seems like, you know, we were always this pivotal battleground thing. Is that a thing that will stay with us from now on, or yes or no? Why? Yes, because we will probably replace Ohio with the number of electoral votes in the Electoral College, this, this census. And hmm. so going forward out of 20, 2020 going forward, we will be a big player. Hmm. So you talk about moving forward. I mean, what kinds of things can our state expect heading into, you know, the November elections in your mind? A lot of fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy this. I love it. It's, these are my playoffs and Super Bowls in November. That's right. But one thing is obviously we have the, the convention coming to town, mm -hmm. uh, to Charlotte, and that's going to be great. And it's going to be an interesting time to be here because North Carolina is typically a purple state, a toss-up state. So that might be the, the event that tips it over to the Republicans. Based on what you've seen, a lot of candidates coming to North Carolina, stumping here, campaigning here, does that actually help them win votes? It, it gives them coverage, and coverage translates into, into notoriety or, or, or I guess you're on, the, you're on the television so you get exposure. So that helps right. them. It's, it's free advertising. Plus, if you're on the, like Bloomberg is on the airwaves relentlessly. And so that just reinforces that for him. You know, I noticed that he wasn't a part of the debates. Yes, he's not been. He's got a, it's an unconventional campaign. Uh, it was tried by, I think, Giuliani back in the late 90s or early 2000s, and it failed. But now we're in a different era because the Internet and Facebook and Google and all those sites are so important in getting your message out. So Bloomberg might be able to take advantage of this, plus Super Tuesday in March 3rd, on March 3rd is making a real big change in how things are going, and he's putting all of his marbles there. How important will it be for a Democratic candidate to win North Carolina in the primary vote here? I don't think it's going to be important because it's part of that Super Tuesday and, and part of that Super Tuesday is there's California, Texas and North Carolina, the top three. Uh, and that, like I said, takes up almost two thirds of the delegates as far as mm -hmm. going to the convention. So what's going to happen, that's going to pretty much di dictate and will be part of that is whether the convention will be brokered or not. Interesting. Thank you for stopping by today. Well, I appreciate it. it. <laughs> it's always like to hear the inside of stuff that we don't get all the time. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some other news real quick. We're going to the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Of course, things are still going on, but organizers say summer games are going to go on despite the coronavirus situation. Now, the torch relay starts in Japan next month. Games start in uh, about five months, but some of the popular sporting events have actually been canceled. Some of the qualifying Olympic qualifying events in China, all because of the virus. And by the way, uh, the Chinese athletes Athletes are not able to travel. That means their Olympic presence in some cases could be in danger. I keep repeating what President Bach. Hey, and speaking of the Olympics, you'll probably see this girl there, Simone Biles. She is bashing beauty standards. Now, the Olympic gymnast shared some strong messages on social media saying she never asked to be a part of a beauty contest. Now, Biles was recently, uh, promo uh, she joined a promotion, I should say, with a skincare company using a hashtag no competition. That promo advocates that beauty is not a competition. So Biles went on Instagram saying that it would be a lie if some of the comments about her body didn't get her down. I mean, she is human after all. She says she is done competing against beauty standards. And I always think it's important when it is an athlete, when it is a celebrity using their platform to just kind of bash some gender stereotypes yeah. because uh, gym, gymnasts work hard for what they're oh, doing. Absolutely. I mean, they they look good doing it. They make it look easy, but it shouldn't be a competition about 
their beauty. That's not what that sport is it's about. It's nothing to do no. with that. Yeah, right. I agree. Well, unfortunately, gymnastics, I mean, even the judging is based on how good a skill looks. So I think it trickles down to just their physical appearance as well. I mean, that's in a lot of women centered sports. Cheerleading, you think about, I know that's a whole other debate about if cheerleading is right. a sport, but that certainly plays into it. The appearance, dance competitions, mm -hmm. it, it all. So I'm glad that she's using this to say, look, I'm not competing based on what I look like. It's competing good for based her to stand on up. all of the skills right. I've yeah, invented. Yeah. And, and look at point. the skills that I can do that no other person That's right. can do. That's named after yeah, me. Exactly. <laughs> and better exactly. than anybody else. Right. Yeah. All right, let's see what Tanya has coming up for us. Romaine lettuce, ready-made hard-boiled eggs, and ground beef. Okay, all of which were recalled, and at least 25% of the people who got sick from eating the ground beef did it long after the recall happened. So, the question is this. Is there a way to improve how we get recall information out? Interesting. So right now, the food manufacturer and the government, they have to get that message out, right? Right. And, you know, we help with that, right? Mm -hmm. And now Consumer Watchdog Group is calling on grocery stores to step up what they're doing. Well, I have seen that sometimes there are items that are on a shelf mm -hmm. that uh, there's a sign missing. Right. And that's really part of it. But not every store does that. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to take a look at this. U.S. Perg did a study and they looked at 26 of the major grocery stores on how the public is alerted of potentially dangerous food that was previously sold. Only four, Harris Teeter, Kroger, Smith's, and Target received a passing grade on that. 22 others failed. So again, this is their report. The grocery mm -hmm. stores, they're not violating any laws or not doing their requirements, but they're saying that maybe they should be doing more. And I mean, I feel like there's a responsibility on both the distributor yeah, and then the person mm -hmm. who's selling it. I mean, that's your product that right. is on the shelf. And they maybe they should alert you and do a little bit more exactly. of that on the back end. Okay, so Two Wants to Know is looking at other measures that grocery stores could be taking tonight at 6 o'clock. All right, now to the question of the day. Come close here. These are two like Tylenol. When you have a headache, how many of these do you take? Two. 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 Really? You only take two? Well, I, I, do, take I two. do have a big ibuprofen <laughs> pill that's like 800. <laughs> so I'll take really one of those. So my wife and I have this argument because okay. I, I followed the rules. Oh. She always goes higher. Okay. So maybe when you have a cold or a backache, you take more. So this is what we're talking about tonight because chances are you take more in a day than the threshold dose is allowing, right? 3,200 milligrams. Do we have that? There you go. Uh, six and a half of these 500 milligram pills would equal that. We're talking dosage and regular versus extra strength tonight at five.
right, so do you want to go out with your friends and remember the evening or you just want to get home safe without paying for an Uber? A bar in Texas is giving people that opportunity with sober bars. Take a look. The sounds and sights are familiar. We have Fuji apple, we have lavender, vanilla, and we have lime. But this menu's a little different. I really love the gin and tonic. It's a newer drink for us. Sands Bar in Austin doesn't serve alcohol, though it aims to be about more than what it goes without. So it's not about just not drinking. If you want to come to Sands Bar, it's going to be an experience. Sands Bar opened in 2017, offering an alternative Friday night out. It drew in regulars like Aubrey Stark Miller. Because alcohol is so normalized in our culture, most people don't really think about it, but if you're not drinking, it can feel kind of isolating. Just a massive crowd. Creator Chris Marshall is now on the road hosting pop-ups in other cities. We're just seeing, you know, crowds of 100 or better uh, at every stop. And he hopes to bring Sands Bar to the Alamo City as more openness about sobriety and health-conscious millennials widen the market for zero-proof drinks. San Antonio bars like Squeezebox on the St. Mary Strip have seen more interest in spirit-free cocktails. A huge trend right now. I think a lot of people are a little more conscious of what they're putting in their bodies. They recently rolled out the Miche Nada using a mix by local business Twang, also taking note of the trend. It's made specifically to mix with beer to make a Michelada, but from there we decided as we looked at the market saw that there's a lot of needs for non-alcoholic uh, drinks as well, so it mixes just as well with club soda. Back at Sands Bar, the vibe does feel different than a bar with alcohol. There's less yelling over loud music, and no one's acting like they've been drinking. But Stark Miller says for her, that's the point. There is a, a genuine aspect to it. There's, you know, there's something that you're kind of looking for when you're drinking that you never quite get in a way. And when you are in a space like this, it might feel uncomfortable at first, but the more you do it and the more that you just kind of let yourself be in the space and be okay with it, you can find some really amazing experience. I love it. I love so rather than thinking of a sober bar as a stand-in for a typical bar, she hopes we'll think of it as something all its own. So along these same lines, my little girl Drew loves to come up with creations in the kitchen. She has been begging me recently to video some of her recipes so she can be, as she calls it, a YouTube kid. So if any of you want a refreshing, maybe warm weather drink, here you go. I present to you Drew Chilton's latest beverage creation. Hi, my name is Drew and today we're making Drew's lemon lime pit. First, ask your parents to cut up three limes and two lemons. This is a juicer. It makes it so easy to get the juice out. Watch. Now we're doing all right. Now we save the juice. Now we're gonna make the drink. This is simple syrup. It's just sugar water. Now we're gonna put the ice in the cup. Cup. One score of simple salt. Whoopsie. And five of my favorite club soda. Cute. And finally, we got with the lemon, and he is Drew's lemon lime fizz. Wow, She's that a was mess. the most only adorable thing. thing that could make it better is if we all had Drew's lemon lime fizz we on the table. That. We needed that. It was funny. She said Super she was doing it, and I was videoing her with that iPad, and she said, I'll put the lemon here. I said, well, say garnish, because that's what they say. You garnish with a lemon, and she had a tough time saying it. And then finally she goes, garnish. I got it. She did it. I like a squirt. Squat. One squirt of squat. simple syrup. That's oh, right. She's got a bright feet. You think she wants to like be on camera or something? <laughs> yeah, where where does she get that from? I have no I idea where that know. comes from. <laughs> I don't know. All right, we'll take a short break. There you go, Drew. We'll be right back.
Hello there, one, two, three. Yes, Maddie, cheerleading is a sport. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Don't miss this next story. So for Valentine's Day, you may give your sweetie some chocolates or a handmade gift, but one woman gave her husband the gift of life. When Richard Lawson was told he needed a kidney last fall, his wife Lynn immediately stepped up to see if she could give him one of hers. He was very hesitant. I, he was not crazy about me doing it, but I was like, you know, if I'm going to ask other people to do, I'm going to at least volunteer first, and what are the chances we'll be in a match? And, and, and we were. were. Yeah, and we were. Richard considered himself blessed to not only spend a short time on the transplant list, but to receive a kidney from who he's always considered his perfect match. I mean, what do you tell somebody giving you life? You know, want to make the want to make the best of it. Now, the couple has been married for 38 years. Their advice to other couples is to always work together as a team. And one thing that the doctor said, I, I spoke with them at Wake Forest in Winston-Salem, the doctor said not only did, you know, he accepted the gift of life and she offered that, but they gave another life because now he is off of the transplant list, which means mm. one person has been bumped up to receiving a kidney potentially uh, sooner than before. Organ donation is a just one of the greatest things you can do. Yeah, and a living donor and you know one of the things Lynn said she thought they were gonna have to do one of those swap situations where she would have to give her kidney to someone else and then mm -hmm. uh, give their kidney to them which isn't one aspect of being a living donor but then to just realize that boom perfect match. That's awesome. Yeah. Good story. Good story. We love it. All right, let's give you a good forecast. Things are changing, and for the better, thank goodness, we can turn off the spigot here. Uh, rain is moving out as we speak, and we're seeing better weather move in. It will be colder, though, so get ready for that. Kind of a dose of reality, isn't it? But we're looking at 46 degrees with sunshine on your Friday. That means tomorrow morning's around 34. The coldest morning will be Saturday at 23 with a high of 43. All sunshine Friday, Saturday, and most of the day Sunday with a high of 51. Then Monday, Tuesday, warm back up, 56 and 61 with a chance of rain. Tuesday, slight chance Wednesday, Thursday as we cool right back down. Wednesday, 30% chance and 58. Just a quick note, we're watching Thursday, some colder air coming in. Right now we'll say a 30% chance of a shower, but stay tuned. 
All right, let's take a look at your commute home. You're looking at our NCDOT traffic camera. This is I-40 westbound at exit 213. That is Guilford College Road in Greensboro. You can see all lanes of traffic moving right along. Everybody be safe out there getting home on this Thursday afternoon. And thanks so much for watching the four to five. We'll check in with Julie Luck now. And coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5 tomorrow, as you know, it is Valentine's Day and a man wants to find his perfect match. He's offering $25,000 to anyone who can help him find true love. And there's more how he'll also match that donation for a very good cause. That's next on WFMY News 2 at 5.